are topics throughout anatomy and physiology which causes unnecessary confusion. It's been my goal through all these videos to eliminate as much confusion as possible. The layers of the heart are definitely one of the poorly explained concepts, at least in my opinion, in human anatomy. We begin by looking at an amazing quote from a classic movie. <laughs> layers. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it? We both have layers. Oh, you both have layers? Oh, you know, not everybody likes onions. What about cake? Everybody loves cake. I am giving the layers as much seriousness as they deserve. Folks, this is easy. Trust me, we'll get through this. But let's freak you out for just a second by throwing our graphic up that shows the complicated layers. We can see we have something called the fibrous pericardium, the serous pericardium, the parietal layer, the pericardial cavity, the visceral layer or the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. Again, it sounds a lot more confusing than it actually is. The heart just doesn't sit in the thoracic cavity. Just if you open up a cadaver or if you do heart surgery for fun or profit, your choice. Um, if you open up the thoracic cavity, you're not just going to go, oh, hey, there's the heart. It's actually surrounded by a bag. This bag for the heart, the heart bag, is there to protect the heart. This bag has a more specific name. Obviously, we can't call it the heart bag. Um, if you do, you really need it, or if your doctor does, you really need to find a different medical insurance. Um, but it's not just called the heart bag, it's called the pericardium. Pericardium. That's the technical name for the heart bag. The heart is found within this bag. The pericardium is a double walled sac which encloses the heart. Double walled which means there's double walls. There's two walls to it. We have an external wall, which is what it shows the world, which is tough, rough, rugged. And then it has an inner sensitive side. That's just sensitive, okay? So we have the two double walls. We have the, the external, which is the tough side, and then we have the internal, which is the sensitive side. The uh, two layers that form the pericardium are the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. The fibrous pericardium, like I just said, is the strong, dense outer part of the pericardium. It's going to blend with something called the central tendon of the diaphragm. You will figure that out when you get to the respiratory system, but basically it melds in. The heart's just not sitting here free floating. It has attachment points to keep it relatively in place. Then we have the serous pericardium, which is composed of three layers. Here's where things can get confusing. So we have this outer fibrous layer, and then we have this inner layer, which has three layers. Don't worry, don't worry, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, just chill. The pericardium. So we have the uh, serous pericardium, which covers and encases the heart. Again, we said it was made of a couple of layers. We have the parietal layer and the visceral layer, and we have a space in between called a cavity. A cavity is a hole. It's an opening. Okay, if you have a cavity in your tooth, you have a hole in your tooth. If you have a cavity in your skull, which we have several, those are openings, those are holes. So we have a parietal layer, a visceral layer, and a space in between. The parietal layer is, aligns the surface of the fibrous pericardium. The parietal cavity is an open space full of very slippery, slick, fluid known as serous fluid. This fluid is there to prevent friction. If you take your hand, okay, pretend this hand is your heart and just rub it against your other hand, that will get sore after a while. And then you can take a break. Well, the heart doesn't have that luxury. We don't want the heart to just take a break and recuperate. If it takes a break, it's called dead. We don't like that. So we have the serous fluid in between this parietal and visceral layer, which is super slippery, which allows the heart to beat without rubbing against the other layers, without rubbing against something else. Then we have the visceral layer. The visceral layer is a outer surface of the heart. It lines the outer surface. Now here's where we get you. 
The visceral layer of the pericardium is the same thing as the epicardium of the heart. Well, why don't we just call it that? Well, because we don't. We have the visceral layer and we have the epicardium. It's the same thing. If you remember from our discussion on muscle fibers, we had the epi, the peri, all that fun stuff. Epi means above or upon. We've heard this word in the integumentary system. We heard this word in the, in the, in the muscular system. Epi is above or upon. So the epicardium is the lining outside of the heart. Then we have the myocardium. The myocardium, myocardium, myocardium is the muscular layer of the heart. This is where the muscle lives. The myocardium is cardiac muscle. Ding, ding, ding. Hold it on a second. Every class for the last eight some odd years teaching anatomy at the college level, I have always told my students that you have skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle. And I always tell my students, cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. And every semester, and by the way, I had a bet on this. Students actually bet me one semester that nobody would miss this question. They bet me cookies. Whoever lost had to bring in a plate full of cookies, okay? The smooth muscle is in the blood vessels. Cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. And on the exam, there was a question about that. Cardiac muscle is found where? A, skeletal muscle. B, heart. C, heart and blood vessels, et cetera, et cetera. And I always had a student miss it. And so long story short, I had students bring in plates of cookies. So nobody ever takes me up on that bed again. But you won't make that mistake, okay? The myocardium is cardiac muscle and cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. Then moving in even further, we have endo. Again, a word you should be familiar with, endo, endocardium. This is going to line the inside. So let's take a look at the technical definitions of these three things. We have the epicardium, which is the visceral of the heart, also known as the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. It's composed mainly of simple squamous epithelial cells over a thin layer of areola tissue. The myocardium, like I said a little while ago, is the cardiac muscle. It's the thickest of the three layers. And then we have the endocardium, which is smooth epithelial. It lines the inside of the heart, covers the surface of the valves, continues on as the endothelium in the blood vessels. So those were our layers broken down. Hopefully they make sense. Hopefully this is not gonna be that much of a challenge because it really isn't. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the chambers of the heart. We're gonna take a look at the left and right atria. We're going to take a look at the left and right ventricle and what goes on in those openings.